Welcome to this video on the standardized inverse normal distribution and the StatCrunch normal calculator. After watching this video, you will be able to use the normal calculator in StatCrunch to find the value or values of a random variable given the probability using both standard and between settings. And lastly, use the notation z sub alpha. Introducing the normal calculator in StatCrunch. Go to statcrunch.com, log on to the site, click on Open Stat Crunch, and then go to Stat Calculators Normal. As you can see, I'm already at Stat Crunch, and I've already logged on. So I'm going to click on this yellowish-orange button that says Open Stat Crunch. Once I do that, I'm going to hover over Stat. The first option is Calculators, and then two-thirds of the way down, I'm going to click on Normal. Now that we have the Normal Calculator and Stat Crunch open, let's begin with our first example. Find the z-score such that the area under the standard normal curve to the left of the z-score is 0.34. Here's a picture of the standardized normal curve. Let's draw an interpretation of what this question is asking. So what this question is asking is it's asking us to cut the normal curve into two pieces so that about 34% 34% of the area under the curve is to the left of this dotted line, and the rest of it, in this case 66%, is on the other side. So now I'm in the normal calculator in StatCrunch. What I want you to see is that you can change this value, which is the z-score, but if you notice, this is also an editable field over here. We can also type numbers into the probability. So what happens if we type in 0.3 over here, sorry, 0.34 over here in the probability, and then hit compute. Notice that we can give StatCrunch a probability and it will generate the z-score for us, which it's done here. So again, we typed in the probability and StatCrunch gave us the z-score, which as you can see is about negative 0.41. Notice that we usually round z-scores to two decimal places. The value negative 0.41 is also this line here, this marker, that divides the red shaded area from the white unshaded area. Let's do another example. Example 2. Find the z-score such that the area under the standard normal curve to the right of the z-score is 0.62. So again, let's draw ourselves a picture of what this is asking. This time we are, again, we're cutting the normal distribution so that the area to the right of this cut is about 62% and the remaining area is 100 minus 62 or 38%. Now the thing is, I sort of randomly placed this line, I eyeballed it, I didn't do it precisely, so I don't actually know where this is going to land on the normal curve, which is why we have to use StatCrunch to find out our z-score precisely. So the first thing I do is I delete both of these fields. I delete the z-score and the percentage. Now remember, this time we're asked for greater than or equal to. So I'm going to hit greater than or equal to, and then I'm going to come over here to the percent and type in 0.62, and I'm going to hit compute, and notice the z-score appears. So we can see from this screen that the z-score is about negative 0.31. That's the value that's shown here, and it's also this line that separates the right-hand shaded area from the left-hand unshaded area. Let's do a third example. Find the z-scores that separate the middle 70% from the area in the tails in the standard normal distribution. Once again, let's draw this on the normal curve. How can we draw the middle 70%? Well, this means we're going to need two lines that divide the middle 70% from the rest of the graph. Well, what's the area in the rest of the graph? Well, 100 minus 70% is 30%. However, where is this 30%? It's divided evenly between the two tails which means that 15% of the remaining area is to the left of this middle region and 15% is to the right. And if we go back and we add up these percents, we're still back to 100%. So 
So since there are not one but two cuts across the standardized normal curve, we need stat Grinch to give us not one, but two different z-scores. Looking at the normal calculator in stat Crunch, it's very clear that there's only one spot for a z-score. So what we need to do is we need to come up here to these options standard in between. Right now we're in the standard view. So if we click on between, all of a sudden we have x sandwiched between two z-scores, which is what we need. So the first thing I always do is I clear out this whole bottom row. And then remember we want the middle to contain 70% of the data. So I type in 0 0.70 and I hit compute and then that gives me these two z-scores. Notice that they're the same value but opposite signs that contain the middle 70% of the data. So the z-scores that separate the middle 70% of the area from the rest are about negative 1.04 and positive 1.04. Introducing z sub alpha notation. The notation z alpha is used to symbolize the z score that separates the upper alpha percent of the values from the lower 1 minus alpha values. Let's draw a picture. So here z sub alpha or z alpha is this z score that is cutting the normal curve into two pieces. The upper region, which is shaded a light blue color here, has an area of alpha. And alpha can be anything between 0 and 1 inclusive. So that means that the unshaded area must be 1 minus alpha. As I said, this symbol here that kind of looks a little bit like an A is called alpha. It is the lowercase version of the first letter in the Greek alphabet. Did you know the word alphabet is formed from the first two letters of the Greek alphabet, alpha and beta. So when you say the word alphabet, it's really Greek for saying ABCs. Let's work an example using this new notation. Find the value of z sub 0 0.42. This is an inverse norm normal probability problem. We can also express this problem by saying, what is the z-score that separates the top 42% of the area from the rest? So that means that this shaded region should account for 42% of the area under the curve, and the rest is 1 minus 0.42 or 0.58. So the last time we were using the normal calculator, we were in between mode, so we need to come up here and click on standard mode. So the first thing I always do is I clear out these bottom fields, and then remember I need to type in 0.42 over here in the probability section. What if I just hit compute? Well, notice that I forgot to change this inequality sign. Remember, we want the 42% to be on the right-hand side, not the left-hand side of our graph. What if I just try to change this inequality symbol without changing anything else? Notice that the computer will automatically change this value, 0.58. So after I change the inequality symbol, I once again have to clear these fields, both of them, and then retype 0 0.42 in order to find the appropriate z-score. And as you can see from the output here, the z-score is about 0 0.20. Let's do one more example using this new notation. Find the value of z sub alpha if alpha is equal to 0 0.09. Again, this is an inverse normal probability problem. If we try to draw a picture of it, this means that we want 9% of the area to be on the right side of this curve and the remaining area, in this case, about 91% to be on the other side of this z-score. Notice that we can also express this problem by saying, what is the z-score that separates the top 90, sorry, the top 9% of the area from the rest? So we're back in StatCrunch, and this is the answer from our previous problem. So what we need to do is we need to clear out both of these fields. And we already have the greater than or equal to inequality selected. So all we need to do is, over in the right-hand field, type in 0 0.09 and hit Compute. And therefore, we get a z-score of about 1.34. So you can see the z-score is about 1.34.
And again, on the curve, that is this dividing line that separates the top 9% of the data from the rest. Having watched this video, you should now be able to use the normal calculator in StatCrunch to find the value or values of a random variable given the probabilities using both standard and between settings, and use the notation Z sub alpha.